Hello, I'm Maggie Walsh, Product Specialist for Alden Optical, and I'm here to present to you Alden Optical's Novacone, a soft lens for keratoconus. Alden Optical saw an opportunity, and that was to come up with a keratoconic lens that would meet some patients' needs. We knew um, that we could give them soft lens comfort, but we were targeting patients that were intolerant to GPs or maybe had a limited wearing time with GPs. Maybe they failed with hybrids or sclerals. While many corrected patients are able to see, their quality of life is adversely impacted. And unfortunately, the performance of typical soft lenses up until now for keratoconus has been less than stellar. So the primary objective was to create a soft lens option for those intolerant to or failed with conventional corrective methods. So save them from surgery and save these patients from unnecessary suffering. So our, our imperatives were to give them outstanding comfort and that was a given with the soft lens. But we needed to give them excellent vision and that would require a breakthrough design. And we also wanted to offer to our fitters a straightforward fitting, and that would also require this breakthrough design and fitting expertise. So for the next few minutes, free your mind from the following conventions. That soft lenses just don't work for cones, that a thick hema lens might compromise the cornea, or that fitting cones has to be complicated. We have seen none of this with Novacone. We have healthy, happy corneas, and we think we have a fairly straightforward, easy fitting process. This is a cross section of the Novacone lens. On the back surface, we have two curves. We have our central base curve that's used for alignment, and we have the fitting curve out in the periphery that is used to actually change the physical fit of the lens. We have an aspheric front surface, and we have five different thicknesses to this lens. We call it the IT factor. We have our dual elliptical stabilization process, and that's the process that we use on all of our toric lenses. It can offer up to 10 diopters of sill and still keep that lens very stable. So what makes Novacone work? Pretty much everything I just mentioned. Uh, we have the thicknesses to neutralize the irregularity. We have a unique design, and we have the dual elliptical stabilization. And when you combine all of those together, it makes for Novacone, and it works. These are the parameters of the Novacone lens. It is a Benz material. Standard diameter is 15.0, however, we can go larger or smaller from that if you need to. Base curves from 5.4 to 8.6. We can go anywhere in between. We can probably go a little steeper and a little flatter if you need it. Fitting curves 8.2, 8.4, Also, anything in between, a little bit flatter, a little bit steeper if needed. Plus or minus 30 in quarter diopter steps up to 10 diopters of sill, around the clock for axes, and the IT factors from 0 to 4. Just so you have an idea of the thickness of these lenses, the 0 is a 0.35, the 1 is a 0.45, and it just goes up in increments. This is what your diagnostic set looks like. It consists of 18 lenses, 6 base curves, and each base curve has three different IT factors. All of the diagnostics feature the dual elliptical stabilization, but they do not have any sill power. So it's easier to assess for uh, the prescription over top and for that rotation. There will be dots at 3 and 9 o'clock to assess the rotation, and then you'll just do an ovary fraction. So we have a four-step fitting philosophy. We fit from the inside out. 
we want you to determine the base curve first. Then you will determine the IT factor. Then you'll do your ovary fraction. And the very last thing you'll do is determine whether that fit curve that's on the lens is actually the one that you want. Step one is to select the base curve. You're going to use this nomogram to decide on which would be the first diagnostic lens to try on. We want you to go by the average central three to four millimeters. We don't want you to take in consideration the entire cornea. Most topographers will measure three, five, and seven, so we want you to go by the three millimeter or if you use keratometry, that will measure that three and a half millimeter area. And then choose that base curve accordingly. Then we're going to insert the lens with high molecular weight fluorescein. So we're gonna put a drop of fluorosoft with a few drops of saline into the bowl of the lens and then insert it and look at the pattern that you have. So we have uh, a steep lens. You can see that there's a lot of excessive cooling here and if you look at the optic section you can see it's very thick there. That patient's not going to see very well. Second one is an acceptable fit and on first glance you might think it looks a little flat but if you look at the optic section you can see that we're getting tears all the way through underneath that lens and that's ideal. We want that lens to fit as flat as possible but still get tears through. The last picture that's too flat is an obvious too flat. If you look at the optic section, you can see right over top of the cone where there's no tears getting through there. So that would be an obvious too flat lens. Next, we decide on the IT factor. It's a rule of thumb that the more irregular the cornea is, the higher the IT factor we seem to need to use but we also want to use the lowest IT factor possible. So you put a lens on, possibly if you have a moderate cone, you're going to start with a zero on one eye and a one on the other. If you have a fairly advanced cone, you might want to start with a one on one eye and a two on the other. But then you need to verify whether you have chosen correctly. And that's done with keratometry or topography over top of the lens and see if you have improved the mire quality. In the top two pictures, there's not a lens on. And then you can see when you put the Novacone lens on, the improvement in the quality of those mires. And that's what we're looking for. You're always going to see an improvement. If they are still distorted, then you'll want to try the next thicker lens and see if you can improve it. But at the same time, you want to stay as thin as possible. So for instance, if you went from a 1 to a 2 and you saw some improvement, but it's still a little bit blurry, you could go to the 3. But then if you go from a 2 to a 3 and you saw no change at all, then go back to the 2 and over-refract with that 2 on. Dr. Susan Resnick, a prominent optometrist in New York City, has worked extensively with Novacone lenses. One of the projects she's been working on with Novacone is this way of figuring IT factor. She bases it on the best corrected VA. As you can see in the chart, the poorer the VA, the thicker the IT factor. This should directly correlate with the more irregularity you have on the cornea, the higher the IT factor that you would need to use. At this point, we can determine the lens power. We need you to wait at least 15 to 20 minutes before over-refracting, and a good place to start is the auto-refractor, of course. It's very effective. Then you can calculate out the power you can compensate for vertex distance if you need to, compensate for rotation if, if there is any, and then document that prescription. This is when that wow factor comes in because when you do an over refraction and you determine what their VA is, you'll find that you're getting very good vision at this point. This is showing you how 
Novacone can correct for higher order aberrations. The top picture is without a lens on and the bottom picture shows with a Novacone lens on and you can see that it can correct some of these higher order aberrations and give us good acuity along with some of the other features of this lens, the different thicknesses, it can help give us good vision. The last step is determine the fitting curve. Now this is where your expertise come in. There's only one fit curve for each base curve in your set. You have to decide if that is the appropriate fit curve for this patient. So we're going to look out towards the edges at this point. I know you've probably already looked at the edges, but look a little more closely and see if you have any bits of edge lift or maybe the patient is just saying they can feel the lens when they blink or maybe there's a little bit too much movement to that lens. We want it to move like a standard soft lens. A standard soft lens moves maybe a half to a millimeter and that should be what you expect. If you're seeing too much, order a steeper foot curve. In the other direction, if there's little or no movement, or maybe you're even starting to see a little edge impingement, it would indicate that we need to order a flatter fit curve. We want you to change that by at least two tenths of a millimeter to make a difference. And then go ahead and determine which fit curve you want to go with. I'm going to go through just an example so that we can make sure that we've got it. So let's say we have a patient that's 40 year old, has pollution marginal degeneration, average central cornea measurement at 3 millimeters is 4824. So what do we want to try for it? We're going to go to the nomogram, we're going to choose the diagnostic that's going to match the topography and the nomogram, and that is a 7884. I'm going to choose an IT1 to start. It's a fairly irregular cornea. And then I'm going to instill the high molecular weight fluorescein, putting a drop of fluorosoft and a few drops of saline into the bowl, insert the lens, and look at the pattern. Looks pretty good. Uh, it looks like the dots are where we want them to be. And then we're going to move forward. Now I'm going to see, well, I've got the IT1 on. The keratometry over top, the first picture is without the lens and the second picture is with the lens on. There's still a little distortion there. You can make a call at this point. You can either go ahead and do an overrefraction and see what, what vision you come up with, or you can pull out another IT factor and try, maybe try the IT too. The key is to fit with the thinnest lens possible, but thick enough to improve the mire quality and give the best vision that you can get. Okay, so now it's time to do our over-refraction. We have decided on the base curve, we've decided on the IT. So we have a 7884 IT1 minus 6 is what's in the diagnostic lens. If our over-refraction is a plus 5 and a quarter minus 175 at 23, yet we have a five degree rotation counterclockwise to the right, we're going to decide that we're going to order a 7884 IT1 minus 50 minus 175 at 18. Now that is if we like the fit curve that's on there. That's what we would order. The last thing um, we're going to determine is if that fit curve is what we want. So excessive movement or edge lift, remember, steepen the fit curve. So if we did see that excessive movement or edge lift, we're going to change that fit curve. And then it's going to be a 7882. Then if in the other direction, if we see little or no movement or impingement, we're going to flatten that fit curve. And it's going to be a 7886. Simple as that. At this point, you have dispensed the lens and you've waited a week to 10 days and you're ready for a follow-up visit. 
So the first thing you would do would be to assess the patient's responses to the lens. Comfort, handling, what their visual acuity perception is. And then you will actually check the VA and do an over-refraction. Determine if any changes need to be made. And if changes need to be made to the IT factor, you need to try on the appropriate diagnostic lens from your set. If you do have to make an exchange at this point, Alden has a very easy exchange program where you do not have to return the previous lens. We have a troubleshooting guide that is in your fit guide. And if you look through these, some of them are pretty standard as to any contact lens fitting. If, if you see excessive central touch, you're going to evaluate the next deeper base curve. But some of these are unique to Novacone. For example, if you have poor acuity, but yet you have Chris Myers, you are going to reassess the base curve. If you have poor acuity and poor Myers, you are going to increase that IT factor. And as we discussed before, no lens movement or impingement flatten that fit curve, or excessive lens movement or edge lift steepen the fit curve. Care products. We know that any of the soft contact lens solutions on the market are compatible with the material of the Novacone. That said, we like to recommend peroxide. There are a number of peroxides out there, including generic store brands now. Uh, you can also feel comfortable using daily cleaners and dramatic cleaners on these lenses if you have someone that has a lot of deposits. I'll touch quickly on how I care for our diagnostic lenses. I like to use a Miraflow-like product. There's Walgreens Extra Strength Cleaner for soft lenses. There's also Soft Pro 2. And then once I've cleaned it, I rinse with saline, and then I store it in a 30-day multipurpose, such as Vi Revitalens. I put a sticker on the vial with the date that I disinfected it so that if it does go beyond that 30 days, I know that lens needs to be re-disinfected. And then before I insert it into the patient's eye, I always rinse with a non-preserved saline solution. This is the standard replacement cycle for Alden Optical. We'd like you to order a single lens first. That lens carries a full warranty for 90 days, unlimited exchanges, and 100% credit if you have to actually return that lens. You can then, at that point, after you're fit and you're satisfied with your fit, you can upgrade to a four pack and we'll send you three additional lenses. Those are non-warranted. You can also upgrade to six packs if you have a patient that just needs more often replacements and um, move on from there. The top 10 fitting tips. The base curve provides optical alignment. It should not be used to change the physical fit of that lens. That's what you're going to use your fit curve for. The next one is a tough one. Cease GP lens wear for at least a week. Sometimes that's just not possible. If you could at least take them away from your patient for a weekend, that will certainly help or maybe consider fitting one eye at a time. If they've been in GP lenses, there will probably be some corneal changes. It just means that you may have to do another diagnostic fitting after that cornea has popped out, and, and uh, that's okay too. The more central the cone, the lower the IT factor. Conversely, the more decentered the cone, the higher the IT factors. And all that means is the more irregularity there is on that cornea, the higher the IT factors that we seem to need to use. Remember that changes to the IT factor or the base curve are going to change that prescription. So if the patient comes back for a follow-up and you think you want to change that IT factor, you need to go back to your fitting set, pull out that IT factor, and do a new over-refraction. A very effective over-refraction can be obtained by using the auto-refractor or retinoscopy. You can certainly use retinoscopy to assess the quality, optical quality, and, and 
all kinds of other things that you observe with a retinoscopy, but refraction can also be done there. In rare cases where Novacone does not give adequate vision for your patient, maybe they're getting better vision with some other modality, but they can only wear that lens for four or five hours, Novacone Novacone can be a good end of day lens. Novacone is designed with a 15-0 diameter, but if you do have smaller corneas or larger corneas and you want to vary that, we certainly can accommodate that. So in summary, Novacone is an important tool to manage keratoconus. We know that we're offering soft lens comfort. We think we have a simple and effective fitting. We're getting excellent visual outcomes, and we hope that Novacone will be a solution that offers excellent vision and all day wearing comfort for your patients. So you're almost there. You're almost certified. Your last step toward certification, when you close this presentation, please look for the hyperlink to Novacone Fitting Certification Test. Fill in all the fields, answer the questions, and then I'll contact you with your results and assign you a certification number if you pass the test. Thank you for taking the time to review Novacone through this presentation. Please contact me if you have any questions via email or phone call. I'm happy to answer anything for you. Thank you.